I'm going to make that my intro. <laughs> What's good, YouTube? Back at it again. It's me, man, music. We came to the studio. Doing do a little quick cook up. And today I am diving into Ableton. I'm going to give this a run through. Uh, I'm going to be in and out talking. Uh, meantime, if you guys hit the like button, subscribe button, leave a comment below. Let me know if you guys want to see anything different. You got any questions? Um, I got years in on this. I uh, pretty much been running through every doll. I uh, really want to give Ableton a try. I know they only get eight tracks and two sands. So I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to challenge myself and see how far I can get. No expectations overall going in. I like to see something turn out. One thing I do like uh, about the the trial versions or the light versions, especially that of FL20, is that you can use your VSTs. So over the years, I've collected a lot of plugins. That was the only reason why in Studio One I went ahead and got the VST uh, pack to be able to use it in there. Because even in the artist version, it's a pretty cool program. I like the fact that it has the I did some pre I did some pre research. It has the always record function. So let's get a piano or something. Actually, now that I think about it, I forgot that I got this plug in for the simple fact that I can go through the piano roll and I can go through the whole process of making a, a scale to run off of. I can use one of their plugins, but I got this plugin from Plugin Boutique Mid EQ or Mid IQ. And inside of, I can't use this in Reason. I'm hoping one day they'll probably fix the uh, the way that it works or plays off each other. But inside of Studio One, FL Studio, I haven't tried Cubase. Um, I don't. <clears throat> I don't use Logic uh, Pro X. I don't have a Mac. I have a PC, so I'm not sure if it works in Logic. But in these programs, you can take MIDI information and send it to a different VST. All right, there we go. So let's play around and find some chords. Mm.
And that's cool. You can switch up and change uh, different voices within a chord progression. So let's figure out a nice chord progression. So I'm in G sharp minor. Find G sharp. All right, so we have G sharp, A sharp diminished. You have B. Uh, C sharp is minor, so let's see. We got two minor chords, so let's. Let's change that to F sharp. And change this to C sharp. So the C sharp to the G sharp kind of brings it home and I just want that to be in there to throw it off. Now I can take this to the diminished chord which changes the voices here and that's cool. Something happened. Ah, that's why. All right, so control mouse wheel can zoom in and out. Likes that it gives you so, let's take that down. So does it have a cut tool? So I need to check out, I have a shortcut file or, well, 
I know what I'm gonna be doing throughout the week. I'm gonna be reading up on this manual. Oh, working with video? Holy crap. You mean I can compose to film and TV now? Control X. Control Z. I like the smoothness of once you double click to add a note, you can just keep on scrolling over. I like that. So right now it sounds real robotic and you want to add some type of humanization to it. And I don't think they have it in here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Leave a comment in the description below if they do. So I guess I'm doing this manually. Almost sounds like picks of a guitar. <laughs> so that actually uh, that wasn't bad. Uh, I admit it. I admit it. I got spoiled in FL Studio with all the extra uh, tools of uh, quantization and humanizing. Also in Studio One. So let's open up a different. Actually, let me see how that sounds. That's kind of, I don't know, it's not like you have to be in between <laughs> the zoom, the directional, 
and then you can mark it or if you go too far down you end up moving the warp marker Now this next plugin is a uh, synth one. It's a free VST, VSTI. Uh, I think it came out around the same time as Zenith, Silent, and it's pretty much the free, ver free version of that. Um, when you initially download it, it comes with the uh, factory sounds, but somebody I can't remember exactly where or when I got it. And I haven't used this in a while, so I take it so long to load up. I don't know where I got the file from, but it's, it's like 25 gigs of presets, which is kind of amazing when you think about it, especially for a free uh, synthesizer that it has, or at least somebody took the time to put let's say you have the option of filling a whole 128 slots for one bank and there's 25 gigs of it so once it's load up I'll show you the folder and actually how many subfolders it has wow, that took a long time all right so this is the synth one I'm pretty sure throughout the years someone has came across it or did another tutorial on it or a video so it's pretty much self-explanatory. It has uh, two oscillators, has an LFO, filter, amplifier effects, equalizer pan, tempo, delay, chorus flanger, voicing. And here is the initial sounds. But there's an external zip that someone else had put out that's 25 gigs. And these are all the subfolders. And some of them have maybe just the minimum sounds, but some of them have a full 128. <laughs> It's just a simple sine wave, sine or saw, but somebody So imagine the possibilities. I mean, you have so many sounds and even with the minimum you're still getting pretty good and it sounds good too that's why it put me in the mindset of the silent and uh nexus too now what i will say this uh going into ableton after listening for years of different tracks made in different dolls, maybe it's just me, but everything in Ableton seems to have this sort of eclectic, organic type of approach to the sound. I know it's a linear program, but even a linear program can be pushed to its limits. But it's like, so much rich textures come out of the program itself and I've seen a lot of people do their tutorials and a lot of people uh, just make random tracks in here and they pretty much use all of the native plugins which is crazy 
they they add a certain type of color to it, but at the same time they don't affect the sound that much like most dolls do. Like Reason Reason is my go to program, but it for me it sounds like it's a little too high end or too crisp. The factory sounds are awesome. They're they're very, 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 very clean and good. But say something like this piano. I guarantee you, just as it is, it will sound totally different in the other dolls. And maybe that'd be something for me to research and look into. I've noticed that after using between all of them, between FL Studio, Studio One, and Reason. Uh, I got Cubase because I'm on Band Lab, and I haven't really dove into that because I, I'm already jumping around four dolls. I don't wanna, I don't wanna jump around another one. I might do a video on that and that'll be a challenge to narrow it down to either two dolls or just one have sort of like a a uh, doll battle <laughs> which doll will win if you ever accidentally delete it and you go back to it it will not load up the same sound it does not have that memory uh, or it will not keep that memory of it All right, so right now I'm working with two, and I guess I better get a melody really going for real. So what I'm going to do is chop that whole process in half. That took a long time to do, which now that I think about it, I just don't want that version of it. I want the whole sound. So actually, I'm going to go from the master and record it. So let's try to add some drums.
Hey. Huh. Oh, I love that record all the time feature. I don't know where the extra sounds are coming from. I mean the effects. All right, I can see why people use it. I would really have to dig into it a lot more often. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to get into uh, FL Studio because I started using that back at version four. And see, that's what I mean. It's just like, I don't have anything on here and that's just a sample that I recorded by itself and all I got is an equalizer the M equalizer and it's not really doing anything for real let's see So I just took out a lot of the lows uh, around around 300 hertz, yeah. Which that would be nice if they had instrument. That's my only thing. So version 10, what's this? 10 point. Like I said, the sound that comes from it is is very is is very eclectic. It's I mean it's almost psychedelic, if not. So I can see why a lot of DJs or a lot of EDM producers use it. That's smooth. All right, wow. It's up 20%, just this one. So that's one key. That's a chord. It sounds nice. I I mean That's nice. Hableton, you're tugging. You're tugging. You you're up there with uh Studio 1 for me. So I likes, I likes, I likes. So, uh I'm gonna be honest. I had to pause the video. <laughs> I had to change my son uh, and give him a bottle. So I believe I forgot exactly where I was going with this. Uh, I think I was gonna cook up in uh, Ableton, but I I am being called. I'm being summoned. So I'm going to end this video. Uh, I'm gonna edit through it. I might edit. Uh, chop it down might post it on YouTube or Instagram but either way um, I'll just consider this we'll just chalk this up as I was given Ableton a test run uh, so my thoughts as far as someone coming from a program like reason and uh, studio one uh, if I just mainly dealt with those I can really see especially with a full version everything that it offers I can see that this being your primary doll I can see why uh, there are a lot of producers that are really making a switch and a change. And to be honest, it's inspiring. So I, I think 
not only based off of what it offers, but the the feel of it, the sound of it, uh, the possibilities uh, uh, that you can do with it. I know that either way, I thank you guys for watching. As always, hit the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with the videos that I drop. I'm going to really start diving into particulars of just individual things such as plugins, sound packs, programs, in-depth uh, tutorials. And we'll just have some fun doing this. We try to keep the creative spirit going so we don't become too robotic. Uh, Milkman Music, thank you for checking out the B Cam Studio. And you guys have a blessed day. Always be courteous. Make sure you be humble. And above all, please, please, please be yourself. I'm going to make that my intro. guys be sure if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you really like this share it and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button